All right, guys, we're back with queso. So, you know, if you ask me, this this is the most interesting part of this work. I don't that if just believing you can get them to do something makes you be able to do it, we have to get people to figure out how to believe. Anybody can do it. I haven't read your comment yet, Justin, but that's why I'm so disappointed. You've got these pet owners doing it. I, I told all of them, wait and see, he'll be able to do it. I see nothing. I see nothing. <laughs> all right, but I'm just gonna put the things, and if you said what's different, I've completely reconfigured the platform, just but Chels, I'm putting this for you. Poor Remote, he didn't make it out. He didn't make it last time. <laughs> Nachos, got a hold of him. So I've got that, I've also got, oh, this is representing a remote, a book, and I think it's just, you know, we're looking for random, random objects that are gonna lead to success. The, the glasses case, the, you know, you're better off if they find something like this and bring it to you. The little shoe, the mucklock, which is representing a glove, and then the keys. So I just put the stuff around. so that thing wouldn't roll away. All right, and then I'll put this one behind here. All right, hang on. finding stuff. <laughs> oh, the cutest dog ever. <laughs> Mommy wasn't fast enough. OM Shoe Bottom. You better get out of here, Shoe Bottom. You're going to get in trouble. You're going to get in trouble. looking where I'm looking is what she's doing. Oh, he's got to find that shoe. You unbelievably adorable dog. Yeah, he seemed to go where I was looking. He just didn't see it. 
You know, he's definitely sniffing, sniff searching. Oh, shoe bottom trying to bring me that thing. For some reason, doesn't see it. Oh boy, here we go. Yeah, shoe bottom side. <laughs> oh, shoe bottom helped him with his homework. Uh, yeah, I think that was everything. Was that everything? Uh, you're not finding that the cutest damn thing ever. Oh, hi, Monique. Am I wrong? Is that the cutest thing ever? Now he's not just doing it. He's doing it with a real gusto. That's the crazy part. Knocking the footstools over everything, looking everywhere. He doesn't get a drink out of the bathroom first. Yeah, shoe bottoms over here trying to give me that look at her. She's trying to... She's trying to make me cash in on this thing. Look at her. Yeah, that's what I, that's how I spend my day. Yep, gotta pay. All right, let me see if I can get rid of her real quick. Thing, but yeah, he's so motivated. He's so motivated. All right, hang on. I'm gonna have to go put him back in the bullpen a minute so I can hide the stuff, or he won't let me. He won't let me hide it. Okay, so what I'm saying to myself is he didn't... Oh, Monique, it's beyond cute. Let me get the wagon. Oh, he just flies out of the wagon. So if you said he's, he's got your little search cone thing figured out. Yeah, I see that one. Yeah, I see that. It's the way he knocks everything over. It's so cute. All right, so remember, white is always going to be... Easy to see. And this, now this I'll put in here because then he'll have success with it. This I can hide maybe behind here. So. And this. Monique's like, that's where you put all the last stuff. I know. But again, remember, I'm gearing the dog for success. I know, Monique. He's only 13 weeks old. If you remember, I started training him when they were real young. It's very, very exciting work is all I can say. The, the enthusiasm the dog has for it, that's, that's what's getting me.
already looking. Oh, he already spotted it. That was your little childhood toy. I try to be a convincing actress. No, he doesn't believe me at all. Right, but the other way. <laughs> nice return, huh, Mike? I hope you're there. Now that footstool's out. <laughs> oh, he's just like shoe bottom. Makes me pay for things that have already been paid. And I do think that's where you need your basket. deliver. Yeah, he smelled those keys now. His methodology is so awesome. You know, the Tiger Truck methodology. If it's in your way, just plow through it or whatever. All right, we got one more. The absence of anything seems to, at the very least, cast them back into a surge. I'm just going to tell you right now, that, that's where you have to resist the pointing and everything else. Once you added pointing to the sequence, well, that's, that's what it is. <laughs> it's very, very exciting work. It's, it's, it, the behavior is getting bigger. It's, it's augmenting. If you said the poor little puppy is my God, I, it's honestly unbelievable. It's honestly unbelievable. What little puppy knocks all these things over and does all these things? This one. All right, let me see if I can distract him a minute. But he does have the subtask of just delivering a hand, and that's where it all started. That's that's a, a permanent habit in that dog now. It's it's that's not. It's, if you said, "How'd you get that?" Almost tried to get that big bottle over there. He probably will. Oh, Steve. I know I'm gonna have some more by Christmas, Steve, and who knows what I'll be able to train him to do by then. By then you'll say, thank God you didn't get that one. This one here is doing rocket science. It's honestly a little bit unbelievable. He 
looked, but he didn't see it. He's going to say it in a second, though, and i got to be careful that this thing doesn't roll away. <laughs> you know, clearly he sees me as someone incapable of, you know, picking things up for myself. It doesn't mind. No, it's, this is, he is beyond unbelievable, Steve. It's, you know, Jesus, what little puppies like that? All right, let me see if I can put him over here one time. trust you more. He's had so much success on his own, but he, he'll travel too. Hang on. I mean, if honestly, if someone was a better trainer than me, they could probably have this little puppy doing blinds and stuff, you know? To Mark. Hi, Sylvia. Anyway, this is a very amazing puppy. Oh, he's trying to pick up that bottle. Oh, so I can get him to travel along the line. You know, I can even... You, you could get to the point, I mean... And you could, you know what, Mike? If you really think about it, you could control your trajectory to the platform a lot better than I do. Oh, Sylvia, this thing is beyond cute. Uh, but I think he's almost ready. Let me get my footstool in the show here. Uh, yeah, he's almost ready to do a little send away. Let me see if I can distract him a minute enough to... I mean, if you practiced, yay! It, it wouldn't take very many times, honestly, Mike, of doing that. I, you, I, I don't even have to tell you. You can already see it. You can already see it. Just do it. You'd have to do it separate. You could. You'd have to set up a pattern. It's, it's beyond cute. And he's even got it as a default if you drop it by accident. Yeah, if anybody doesn't like that, and if you said, well, you know, so well, what is this a byproduct of? It is a byproduct of you me using those vibrating collars. That's what it's a byproduct of. All right, come on. Let's just go on a little tour to the pond. Sylvia, have you ever been to the pond? Let's go. We're going to take Sylvia down to the pond. And we're going to do our pager intro. And again, that's for anybody to say that. I don't see any benefit of doing that with a puppy. And if you say, oh my gosh, she bought enough my remote out here. If you said, well, give me one example. Uh, Nilla Phillips. <laughs> Noah Phillips, the self-training puppy. 
And I put a train to retrieve on there. Oh, look at that little monkey picked that remote up for me. Can you even believe that? Oh, I need him. Sylvia, I've got a boxer that takes everything off. And so now I can, I can train this dog to pick all the things up that the boxer runs off with. It's absolutely... So what I've got on this puppy is a vibrating collar. I'm just going to pick up that bottle. Um, that vibrates like a very weak foam pager. Oh, it's nice out here. What if I do the rest of the show out here? Come along, Sylvia. You're in for a treat when you see this pond. So what I'm saying to myself is what my job is, is to add this pager to an existing behavior. Or I can create a behavior with it, honestly. You can, but this dog already has that behavior, so... And I can start using the name for the intro. I'm probably just going to use Puppy Recall, though. And we got the Molly Factor. Absolutely. Queso! Yay! Yay! And I've already got my fish hook. I've already got my fish hook on there. Anyway, they're coming to cut the grass today. Oh, look at them chasing a butterfly. How absolutely adorable. I'm sorry it doesn't get any better than that. So what I'm saying is I've got Molly out here uh, acting as the driver. And, I, you know, that's probably what you need, Chelsea. Casey! He said, why did it spin around like that? Because it's waiting for that cue, and the cue just got clearer when I bumped that page. Or, and if he said, well, what do you mean? Now it's going to turn like that. Mm -hmm. I honestly believe that's what it is. I honestly believe you've installed that footwork. The first... Queso! So that's what you're trying to do is all dogs have that same footwork when they change direction. So you're looking for opportunities to ch change the dog's direction. It's, it's honestly really that simple. There are lots and lots of nuances to it, but, you know, you could do it. You know, I'm actually surprised they don't use pagers to help kids. They, there are a lot of applications for pagers with kids. I don't know if you're there, Chelsea. Remember Greg invented that one kooky collar? Or, uh, no, it was, a, it was a thing that kids were supposed to put on their wrist. Oh, it played ambient music and all this stuff. Oh, please. And then it had an alarm and all these things. It looked like, you know, it looked like something from a cereal box from 1963. No, like if you sent in 500 labels, you got this thing. So that's my job. My job is to not inhibit the dog to have free agency. I've got to have a dog that will go ahead of me. And if you don't have a dog that goes ahead of you, you need to understand that something would, could happen to make the dog go ahead of you. So, you know, you might need a driver dog. Get anybody's dog. Get your mother-in-law's dog. Get anybody's dog that will take off, and you'll be able to get these dogs out ahead of you. The absence of that... You would have to always understand. Queso! And he's chugging. And if he said, what's that? That... Oh, boy, Molly's... Molly was going to take on one of the rabbits, but then she said, Damn, have you seen the size of these rabbits? So I'm not diminishing the dog's... Free agency. I understand now that I'm actually even augmenting it. Okay, here we go, here we go. If he gets going around that corner. Queso! If you said what you like about it, the, ah, ah, ah. All right, back to the water. Oh, he'll go right in. Yeah, look at him go.
Oh, he's the cutest damn dog ever. But if you said, what should you always be doing with the dog? Systemically driving it back in your direction. If you said, what? Because if not, they're running away. That's the only two choices. That's the only choices. Oh, he'd retrieve out of the water too, I'm sure. So if I can get him on this straight away. Oh, <laughs> oh he's got heightened reality. Yeah, you know, but that's that's who you need to be. That's who you are. You're, you're, the heightened reality doesn't really exist without you in the perfect world. You know what I mean? It's there's no fun if she's not there. Ah, it's no fun. It's like that one uh, friends, Fun Bobby. They always had fun when Fun Bobby was there, until Fun Bobby stopped drinking. show you there's this uh these treats that i bought there's a picture of a dog on there that looks identical to molly all right we can see if we can get him one more one little straight away and that's what you're looking for i've got a nice little straight away here and that we understand you know you do have to understand somewhat the laws of physics with these guys you also need to all understand almost all dogs take off running after they poop so uh, you know, if you said I can't get them running, most all of them do it then, so when you see a poop and take off, I, what else to tell people? All right. He's finding something. If I had to guess, possibly rabbit poop or something. It does seem to have developed his nose, though. I mean, he wasn't sniffing like that in the beginning. All right, so I'm looking for a little speed. I know they're always going to run back to the pond. And you definitely don't always want to stop them from going back to the pond. But you do sometimes. You do sometimes. Yes, yeah, boy, he, he already defaulted to it, Mike. I, I went to take a step away, and it was it spun him back around. You know, and I do think that's some obligation. And Christopher said that. I mean, there's people out there. Oh, my God, he's so damn cute. Uh, that care about animation. And Christopher's one of them. And so is Mike. And so is Chelsea. They're, they're not, they don't want to be the handler whose dog on the end of the leash is lifeless. You know, that's the cutest damn thing I've ever seen in my life. You know, if you said, I love dogs, well then there would be a selflessness to that. Am I wrong? A real selflessness. Yeah, I'm so selfish. That's why I'm using these collars. I'm understanding you can do things. You can allow them joy. I, I don't know what else to say. I have a fish are waiting for me. I don't know if you've ever seen the... Uh, uh, anyway, let me give Sylvia a little 360 tour. There's a little trail that goes back around behind there too, but it's kind of scary. And it goes all the way around. We're going to go back in the back later. And then back behind these bushes, I keep a little fenced off area for my rabbits. They're actually wild, but I just say they're mine. So they can live in these little woods, and then there's a little fenced off, little small, tiny little pasture area that they can eat their grass unfettered by the jaws of 
<laughs> anyway, that's that's the result. That's what I'm getting. This is my second day on the e-collar. Queso! <laughs> and you're doing two things. You're, that spin will persist. I, I know you couldn't really see it right then, but I, I, I do it as, let me see if I can get him out here and do it one time. Your job is, and then this is where it gets complicated. Honestly, this is your job, Mike, to create a level of disinhibition while And I would say avoiding inhibition, but you have to have the same. But I think that's what just that on itself is a statement that you are looking to develop a state of disinhibition in the dog. I think Woodstock. <laughs> Every day with you is like Woodstock for this dog. So he's got, he's almost got a default down. Only because he likes to go under things. I'm willing to bet I can get him to pick up that little thing right there just by looking at it. Just doing that seems to make him look around. Yay. If you said, how'd you get him to pick it up? I looked at it. I looked at it. I looked at it. And I'm sure there's... Uh, I'm sure there's ways to do it better, and I am working on that. I think you can pick this up. I'm sorry if that's not the. Once you've got the behavior. I'm sorry. If you said, why doesn't he do it? Because of the Molly factor. It took me a second to understand that's what the problem was. And if you said, what do you mean? Molly's got a little force field around her that she's made clear that you don't come into. And so once I moved it away from her, and if you said, well, how does she enforce this force field? Her big buggy eyes. That's how. Anyway, guys, I'm out of treats, but I hope you like that. Um, Sylvia and you guys, I will be right back with, um, what about another puppy episode? How about that? See you guys.